So I grew up in the family business in West Yorkshire, did my apprenticeship and city and guilds. When I was a youngster, 16, I sort of knew that I wanted to work with my hands and learn a craft and learn a trade. I don't think that everybody is always geared out to do IT work or go to university. And I think now, more than ever, more young people need to come into the trades. With the association, I was always involved as an early young man, taken to meetings of the branches of the association. So I grew up to understand what the association was about. I became like the Wakefield branch president. Then I became the president for the North East region. And then 2009, I hit the pinnacle where I became the national president of the PDA. And after about 15 months, they actually offered me the full-time position of chief exec. And so this year, 2021, is much my 10th year as Chief Executive of the PDA. So for the smaller member that makes up sort of the larger percentage of our association, they see us as a family, a one-stop shop for health, support, legal opportunities, anything at all which they might need support with their business. For the bigger companies who are members, we're also built members of the Build UK, which is the umbrella organisation for trade bodies, and we're also a member of UNIEP, which is the European trade body. So our national contractor members, they will sort of like those sort of benefits, whereas the smaller members, they will use the legal services, the associate partner benefits. So lots and lots of areas where we can support to help them run the business. I've always said that it's great to be able to do the job with your hands. You've learned the trade, you've done your apprenticeship and you can do the job to the best of your ability. But I think to actually have those business management skills. So when you actually get the initial phone call, you go and knock on the door of the client, that the client has the trust in you. They can understand that you know your job, what you're talking about, and you can advise them maybe on, yes, this colour will work, this wallpaper won't work, and actually give the client that reassurance that by employing you as a professional decorator, they will end up with a perfect finish and a great job. The painter and say the flooring person is always the last onto sort of onto site. And you don't always see what's behind the walls with the plumbing or the electrical, but when someone walks into that building, it is the finish that you see. So I think that the painting trade, the people in the painting trade, we need to be respected as that finishing trade. So when you walk into the room and people get the wow factor that the person can actually stand back and think, when I started this job a few weeks ago, it was an empty bare room and now the room has got life, it's breathed into it, fresh air, colour and I think people can just get that vibe of actually being a painter and decorator. When you're a professional decorator and you're not a DIY painter that's using a, a paintbrush maybe only once every couple of years that you clean it out and put it in a drawer and when it comes out the brush has gone hard. I think you need to use those tools as a part of you, look after them, keep them clean, protect them, value them. They're not always the cheapest products, so always make sure that you're looking after the tools. They in return will give you a fantastic job and a fantastic finish. So yes, always if you can afford it to go for the very best in tools available.